You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Fabulous. Live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Amazing. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. And a very, very good day, everyone, here on this Super Bowl Sunday. Wow. Wow is right. What an amazing year for Northern California. Uh, and I don't mean 2013. I just mean the past several the months. The past, yeah. <laughs> uh, what first, an amazing month. <laughs> first, the Giants mm-hmm. win. Don't just go to the World Series. Win the World right? Series. Right. And now another California team represents at the Super Bowl. In the big game. Uh, the only team that has ever played more than one Super Bowl without losing. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. That is. Five, I believe it is, five So it would be, this will be the sixth if the they sixth. win today. Correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are the favorites. Uh, wait, hold on one second. I'm knocking <laughs> Knock on, on wood. Pressed, I'm, I'm knocking on pressed wood particle board. Uh, <laughs> be, <laughs> because uh, I do not want to do any sort of uh, jinxing. No. The voice you hear uh, chiming in with me is the lovely Patty Pyburn, by the way. I don't, did I already introduce you? Um, I, I can't be so. certain. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> at any rate, and I am Randall White. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network, which is California's number one place to, well, talk about just current... number one place. We could just stop just there. It's just the number one place, right, <laughs> uh, to talk about current trends in food, beverage, travel, tourism, and it is our goal each week to give you the tools you need to enjoy all of life's fun, pleasures in a healthy, sustainable, and community-focused manner. Okay, straight ahead this hour, Ms. Pyburn. Yes. Uh, We will speak with the co-author of a study that came out this past week involving fried foods. A lot of fried foods eaten in the next 24 hours. Yes. Uh, (laughs) They are among the uh, top 10. Nielsen put out a Mm -hmm. top 10 involving uh, fried foods. A few chicken wings. Yeah, chicken wings. (laughs) Chicken wings are in the top 10. Yes. (laughs) As are uh, French fries and snacks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, uh, fried foods and its connection to prostate cancer. Oh. Uh, A new study coming out that if you eat a lot of fried food, you probably don't want to hear. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll be talking to the co-author of the study and then what further study needs to be done as well involving all that. And then uh, at the bottom of the hour, we'll speak with uh, Laura Kath. She is with the city of Santa Barbara's mm-hmm. Car Free Program. And we've talked about this on the show before, how much we love Santa Barbara, but it is not <laughs> the cheapest place no. to uh, visit. It is, however, if you go car free, they have amazing discounts. To a lot of incentives. Yeah, to just in- just to leave your car at home, not a bad deal. Yeah. So, so she's got all the info on that. She does. In fact, didn't you interview her this past week? Um, not case? this not this past week, but many times in the past. She's awesome. When Patty's wearing her television hat. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, you know, they call Santa Barbara the American Riviera, mm-hmm. and it really is. It's like it's so flashy, it's and beautiful, yeah. and just it is. I heard a. Uh, I heard a talk show host, a national talk show host, uh, describe Santa Barbara on the radio the other day. And he said, because a caller was calling in from Santa Barbara, and he goes, uh, oh, Santa Barbara, I've been there and it's beautiful. He goes, that's what people imagine Los Angeles and (laughs) California to be like. Right. Um, (laughs) Exactly. When you get to L.A., you're all, oh, this is L.A.? Right. (laughs) Where's Santa Barbara? (laughs) Right. No diss on Los Angeles, I'm just saying. So, okay. And then uh, joining us from Los Angeles is uh, Gabe Zaglia with Travel Mm -hmm. Zoo. He's got all the... All the deals that are fit to print. Um, And then next hour, we are joined by uh, my very good friend and an excellent chef, Chef Chef Christopher from Oakland, with all sorts of terrific Super Bowl. So if you're hosting a Super Bowl party, you're going to want to stay tuned to the next hour uh, because all sorts of great little themed Based on San Francisco, Mm -hmm. Baltimore, and New Orleans, these are all themed appetizers you can serve. And stuff that you really can do between now and the start of the game. So Very cool. Uh, and, and the recipes are posted at eatdrinkexplore.com. Very cool. We'll also talk to the Haas Avocado Commissioner, live from Zurich. <laughs> His plane is landing at 9 o'clock, our time. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we're going to try to talk to him because <laughs> avocados have really gained in popularity. All right, it is time, Ms. Is it Pyburn, time? for a little thing that we like to call the news. And... Uh, <laughs> 
there is your dramatic opening. Patty? <laughs> Here, Randall White is what is making news this morning from yeah. the Eat, Drink, Explore news desk on this Super Bowl Sunday. Burger King restaurants in the UK are now admitting that some of the burgers they've been selling included horse meat. Mm -hmm. Ew is right. The company says it discovered trace amounts of horse DNA in samples tested from its restaurants after being notified that one of its suppliers was under investigation. The company issued a statement this past week saying they are committed to making sure this never happens again. Astronauts on board the International Space Station will be watching the big game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens this afternoon. NASA confirmed to Space.com that a satellite link to the Super Bowl would be provided. Two Americans, a Canadian, and three Russians make up the current team aboard the station. No word, though, on which football team they're pulling for. <laughs> now, that's, <laughs> that is a, a vantage point that would be rather interesting. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> We're just circling around the globe. You know, we can't shower and we can't have fresh food, but we can watch the Super Bowl. Watching the Super Bowl. That's right. And here's a little factoid from Space.com. Yes. The International Space Station is roughly the same size, tip to tip, as the football field in New Orleans. I didn't picture it being that large. Well, they've got those big... The arrays, the solar arrays. Exactly. And so that takes up a lot of space. But we're, their living compartments certainly aren't that no. big. No. <laughs> it's not like they're taking a jog or something no. <laughs> around the field. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, a trade war between the U.S. and Mexico is no longer a threat now that the two nations have agreed on a price for imported tomatoes. The U.S. Commerce Department announced this week that a 17-year agreement will be renewed, essentially raising prices and stabilizing the market for Florida producers. Nearly $2 billion worth of tomatoes were imported into the U.S. from Mexico last year. This is according to Bloomberg News. Most of the nation's domestic eating tomatoes are grown in Florida, mm -hmm. while those used for sauces and canning are farmed right here in California. We actually let them ripen in California, whereas <laughs> the ones in Florida, they don't let them ripen. They pick they, them green. They have to ship them early. Yeah, they're hard as a rock. They gas them to turn them red, mm -hmm. and they're the nastiest things. I mean, I'm just... They look pretty. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> but yeah, the California <laughs> ones are good, and you see them in the back mm -hmm. of trucks a lot of times, uh, especially up and down like 5 and 99. Right, and I wonder how they don't become tomato sauce before they get where they're going. <laughs> True. They're all piled in there. All right, for more on these stories, you can head over to our website, eatdrinkexplore.com, and a quick note on our Super Bowl weather for California on this Sunday uh, partly cloudy skies, mild temperatures. It was really foggy here in San Luis Obispo on my drive in. We were yes, the, thick. really socked in on Highway 227. Northern California, mostly in the 50s and 60s. Central and Southern California will see some 70s. So that looks really nice for a Sunday. And that is pretty much the way it's going to look. California for the next couple of days. <laughs> you know, every single morning when I'm putting together the uh, little weather forecast for mm -hmm. you, there, Patty, I check uh, a lot of cities. Sacramento, San right. Francisco, Santa Cruz, of course, uh San Luis Obispo, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Uh, San Luis Obispo is by far the warmest. Today, it's supposed to be really? 77. You wouldn't know it looking outside. Not yet. It hasn't burned off yet. No. But it should turn into a really beautiful yeah. day. Yeah. LA, like 72. Um, at Santa Cruz, it surprised me, was the cool spot, like at 58 or something. Hmm. Yeah. Because uh, typically, Santa Cruz is the place to be. It's beautiful. All right. Stick around, everyone. Just after the break. You know, you really should listen to this. We're going to be talking fried food and prostate cancer. It might make you think twice about ordering those buffalo wings yeah. during the game today, okay? You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. I'm your host, Randall White. Great to have you with us. Back in just a moment. The holidays are now over, but Restaurant Month here in California is just getting started. As January unfolds with a wave of culinary diversity, the hottest place in the state to take it all in is along the Central Coast in San Luis Obispo County. Featured on local menus are ingredients grown on nearby farms, savory seafood caught that day in the Pacific Ocean, and grass-fed beef raised on the county's lush green hillsides, all served with a touch of western flavor unique to the region. Not only are these offerings among the best in the nation, but these foods are paired with top local wines, craft brews, and outstanding scenery. When considering your 2013 New Year's resolutions, be sure to include an education for your palate, an experience that can only come from visiting the culinary destination that is San Luis Obispo County. Oh, and I'm sure saving money is on your list of resolutions as well. 
perfect because participating restaurants are offering substantial three-course menus for just $30. This is your opportunity to sample some of the many establishments you've talked about visiting but never have or revisiting some of your old favorites. And because Slow County is at the heart of Central Coast wine country, a new element is being added this year called Wine Wednesdays. Now, select restaurants will be pairing their menus with a local vintner's selections and look for other wine-related options as well. San Luis Obispo County's 6th Annual Restaurant Month runs January 1st through the 31st, but don't wait until the month is almost over to start enjoying this annual tradition. Don't hesitate. Find the restaurant of your choice and make your reservations now. For more information, head to sanluisobispocounty.com and start planning your next mouth-watering adventure. Yo, what's up? This is the Black Eyed Peas. And we're here for Rad, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. Music is one of the most important things in our lives, but nothing is more important than life itself. So when you drink and drive, you're risking the life of yourself and the lives of everybody on the road. Don't plan to drive, just plan ahead. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. The traditional light bulb, a groundbreaking invention in 1879. Other groundbreaking ideas from that time, the whalebone corset, the pedal-operated submarine, and the two-story outhouse. We've come a long way since then. It's time our light bulbs did the same. Visit energysavers.gov and learn about energy saving light bulbs. See, these new bulbs are more efficient than the old ones, like a text message is more efficient than a carrier pigeon. They last longer, too, like how we humans last longer now that doctors use antibiotics instead of leeches. And they cut down on our energy costs, because in our own groundbreaking age of aeroplanes and moving pictures, we deserve a light bulb that saves us some cash. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. And a very good Super Bowl Sunday morning to you as you listen to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Great to have you with us. I am your host, Randall White, joined by Patty Pyburn, my trusty sidekick in crime here. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Randall White. And good morning to everyone joining us as they uh, get up and start the day, you know, on a good note. And then we never know what's going to happen and later. And cross your fingers for your team. <laughs> <laughs> I am really, really pulling for the San Francisco 49ers. They're my... Really? I hadn't noticed. <laughs> Is that what that maroon shirt's all about? <laughs> red with... Uh, oh, sorry. Red shirt. Red and gold. gold. Crimson, <laughs> crimson and gold. And uh, yeah, you know, the 49ers haven't been to the Super Bowl in a while, but, mm -hmm. but they used to go all the time <laughs> and they used to win all the They're time. They're bringing it back. All right. <laughs> and I hope they bring back that winning spirit as well. So uh, we will have lots of Super Bowl tips for you. It's a complete Super Bowl blowout next hour. Mm -hmm. This hour, however, uh, we are, I guess, still in the same theme because on Super Bowl Sunday, a couple of the most eaten foods are fried. Uh, chicken wings yes. are in the top 10. Are, Don't you wish you didn't like them? I wish I didn't. They're so tasty and delicious. I, lo <laughs> I love chicken wings. But a new study came out this past week uh, that shed some light on eating fried foods and prostate cancer. And joining us uh, right now is Marion Newhauser. She's a study co-author there at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center uh, with more on uh, exactly... Uh, how bad this connection is. Welcome to the program, Marion. Having me. <clears throat> yes, yes, we did a study of prostate cancer in the Seattle, Washington area, 
And uh, we found that many of the fried foods that a lot of people love, including French fries, fried chicken, fried fish, donuts, are associated with about a 30 to 37% increased risk of prostate cancer. That's a really large Mm -hmm. increase. It is a rather large increase because most risk factors increase cancer risk by 10%, 15%. So, you know, 30 to 37% is, is a rather large risk. So what do you make from that? What, what does this mean to you after the study has been completed? Well, this would be an easy way for men to modify their diets. A lot of risk factors for cancer we can't control, such as our family history. If men have had a father, grandfather, brother, or uncle with prostate cancer, that really increases their risk. We can't change um, a lot of other aspects of our personal makeup, but diet and exercise are things that people can easily modify. Now, the good news about these foods that we examined is if you have them just once in a while, it it didn't seem to increase risk. So men who are looking to eat those wings today (laughs) and those chips today, (laughs) <laughs> They'll probably be fine, but we found that men who ate these foods at least one one time or more per week, they were the ones that had the increased risk. If you have them once in a while, once every couple weeks, once a month, few times a year, it won't influence their risk. And so what about the food? Is it the kind of food that we're frying? Is it the fact that it's saturated in oils? Like, What about that food is the problem? Those are really good questions, and with this study, we couldn't really tease apart what it was about the foods that was associated with the increased risk, Uh, but we can hypothesize a number of things. As you mentioned, the foods are soaked in oil, and then when they are cooked at a very high temperature, they easily become oxidized, and sometimes this extra oxidation can cause cells to undergo DNA damage. And DNA damage is at the heart of all cancers. That's how cancer starts, with a disruption to the normal integrity of the DNA. There are several cancer-causing chemicals that are created in that high heat cooking process, right? That's correct. So it could be some of those chemicals. It could also be a change in the actual muscle meats, which is different than the fat surrounding the fried foods in the Mm -hmm. frying process. And a number of other studies have shown that meats cooked at very high temperatures can also uh, uh, create some of these harmful chemicals that may be associated with increased cancer risk. And you may have heard about previous studies of barbecued meats Mm -hmm. and charred meats. Well, this is along the same lines because the meats are cooked at very high temperature. I can't tell you how much this information bums me out. <laughs> because I love, <laughs> Some I love, of your favorite things. <laughs> I love uh, foods that are flash fried, which typically means mm-hmm. the oil is exceptionally it's hot, hot mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. in there for a shorter period of time. Uh, and I used to think that that was a healthier way of going because uh, it's not as drenched in oil when it's flash mm-hmm. fried. Uh, but now I'm understanding that the high heat Could portion be part of it. component is a big portion of it. Right, Marion? Yes, the high heat may be a component. And so what you might think about, think about what it is that you like about that. Is it the crunch? Yes. Is it the taste? Yes. You know, what as <laughs> The what saltiness? Or both? <laughs> yeah, right. And so when you get that urge, what are some other, you know, crunchy things that could be substituted mm-hmm. so that you have that high heat food less often? Uh, so you know, other ways to satisfy that craving. Yeah, that's a good point. That's correct. Uh, Anthony, our audio guy... Uh, spoke out loud and said celery, and yes. I have to, <clears throat> I have to yes. agree. Celery does have a great crunch mm-hmm. to it. Uh, it's a little yes. high in sodium, but it's, uh, it's. I love celery, mm-hmm. so that's not a bad. Yeah, but it comes with the wings. Yeah, eat the, <laughs> eat the celery and not that's the right. wings. That's right. It often comes with the wings. You just have to hold off on the blue cheese and, yeah, you know, right. have just a little bit of that with the celery. So does this open the door for more study then to kind of look further into some of the nuances that this kind of brings up? Like, what is it? The oil, the heat, the kind of food. Does this open the door for further studies? It certainly does. And some of the studies that I am particularly involved in involve doing just this. We bring participants into what we call our human nutrition lab, and there we can test very specific foods, you know, cooked in certain ways, prepared in certain ways, and measure biological response 
in the study participants. So sometimes we call them, you know, the human guinea pig studies. Right. Mm-hmm. But those are the best ways to really determine whether or not a particular food substance cooked in a certain way, presented in a certain way, or just even the food itself has either a beneficial or not so beneficial biological response. Are there so any... this is kind of the first step in in trying to think about what we should, where we should go next. Right. So are there any, um, is, is there any thought to like a lifestyle factor where if you're the kind of person who chooses to eat, say, donuts, french fries, etc. once a week versus someone else who may be pursuing a sort of, you know, quote unquote, healthier lifestyle and not choosing those kinds of foods because it's part of an overall, you know, exercise routine and other, does that make sense? Have you looked yes. at those factors? Yes, we have looked at those factors. And one thing that's very common among people who have a lifestyle that is full of these kinds of foods is that very often they're overweight. And so what we did in this study is we statistically controlled for their body mass index, which is a way to measure how how overweight someone is. So even when we make that equal, in other words, Mm -hmm. all, all weights being equal, the fried foods were still associated with increased risk. Uh-huh. So you did factor that in. That's good to know. Yes, we did. Because yes. then you can't, someone can't just excuse us and say, well, I live a healthy lifestyle. That doesn't apply to me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Were there any surprises in this study, fried foods that didn't, uh, were not associated with an increase or the percentage of increase, like you mentioned earlier, any of those things surprising? Yes, we were a little bit surprised that snack chips, were not associated with a large increased risk. So that would include, you know, potato chips, tortilla chips, Cheetos, oh, you know, any of those fried <laughs> snack foods. That is so, interesting. Now that, doesn't, that doesn't let everybody off the hook. Right. They no. can <laughs> eat those all the time because there's other aspects of those foods that are not so healthful. So consider those a once-in-a-while food, not something you want to eat every day, but try not to eat it every day. Right. Just once in a while. You know, Marion, when I was writing the story for our website earlier in the week, I was eating beans that I had made at home, but using tortilla chips to eat the beans. And I was uh-huh. like, oh no. But then as I kept reading the study, I'm like, oh yeah. Good. <laughs> right. <laughs> Marion Newhouser, uh, the study co-author there at Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me and happy Super Bowl Sunday. Likewise. All right, stick around, everyone, because just ahead, we are teaching you how to explore Santa Barbara on the cheap. Awesome. Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. SS Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today by contacting the team you need. Head to SS Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows, and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we 
approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.npca.org. What if it wasn't always about getting ahead? What if you didn't care about being on the fast track? What if your career goals were to change? Instead of flying off to the big interview, what if you flew somewhere else altogether? To embark on a different track, to volunteer in ways you never dreamed of, in places you never imagined yourself being, like a tiny island in the Pacific, barely visible on a map, but where needs are easy to see. Or a village on the African continent where just a little training in HIV awareness can change the fate of thousands. What if you decided to share your skills with others and help someone else get ahead? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? To find out more, call 800-424-8580 or visit peacecorps.gov. For the latest video and information from today's show, head on over to eatdrinkexplore.com. We're constantly updating it with the latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Also, we're launching a new section of the site called California Love. This is where we recommend great companies. And the best part is every single business we feature is locally owned. We've checked them out and are confident you'll love them as much as we do. This is a great tool to have as we head into the holiday shopping season. Since you're already spending money, you might as well support your neighbor. We choose businesses that give back to the community, care about the environment, or use only the freshest local and organic ingredients. They also make their products products here not overseas our california love business recommendation tool is still in the development stages but will be available very soon at eatdrinkexplore.com eat drink explore media your lifestyle information source Good Sunday morning, everyone. I typically at this point say Sunday fun day. <laughs> you have to come up with something new for it's Super Sunday. It's Super Sunday fun day. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Okay. So <laughs> thank you, Patty. I need someone with a sharp brain on this show. At least one of us, right? <laughs> so uh, happy Super Sunday fun day, everyone. I'm your host, Randall White, uh, joined by Patty Pyburn, and you are listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Uh, we are launching into the Explore portion for this half hour with lots of great travel Travel Deals by Gabe Saglia coming up a little bit later. He's uh, Travel Zoo's number one guy and has a list of fantastic properties for us to check out. But right now we're taking you to America's Riviera, the American Riviera, mm-hmm. just down the road, Highway 101 or Highway 1 from us, uh, down into uh, Santa Barbara, where it's typically kind of on the pricey side, wouldn't you say, Patty? I would say. Not if you go car free. And Laura Kath is here with Santa Barbara Car Free to talk all about it. Hi, Laura. Good morning, Randall. Good morning, Patty. It's great to be on Eat, Drink, and Explore on this super Sunday. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I trust that you're, you're a Niner fan? Totally. <laughs> okay, now, good. I know, okay, I got to tell you, Randall, let's face it, I'm wearing red right now. Okay? Right, me too. Yes, <laughs> I mean, we're all, you know, let's, let's face it, we're, we're Niners, go Niners. However, you uh-huh. know, but this is, we want to segue a little bit and do a little green thing for the next few minutes okay you, yes. you know that it's 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 cool to be green yes. and, and it's not the raven's save color you so. Green. Okay. <laughs> so yeah not the raven's colors okay, okay. so you know. i have taken i'll tell you right now right off the top i have taken amtrak to santa barbara before and it is the way to go mm-hmm. oh it is an amazing opportunity this you know it this is fun, so much fun i love representing santa car santa barbara car free because Go to SantaBarbaraCarFree.org, folks. This is the, the, main, the main website for, for all the goodies that we're going to be talking about today. But I'll tell you, Randall, you are so right about the train and about all the components. It truly is easy to be car-free. We've been promoting this opportunity since 1998. This is the first program in the country that a air pollution control district... Okay, the big bad meanies, right? That <laughs> they want to fine you for you know fine businesses and you know folks for, for you know for polluting. Well, in Santa Barbara, the car, the Santa Barbara County Air Pollution Control District, which sponsors Santa Barbara Car Free, 
came up with this idea of incentivizing visitors to take, you know, park your car for a while, take alternative transportation, reduce smog for a cleaner air, healthier planet, and a healthier you, and a healthier wallet. It's brilliant. It is so much fun, and we've made it fun, and I'm so excited to be part of your Explore segment today because this is a chance for folks to, to save some green while being green. I like it. And so what sort of deals are we talking about? So uh, first of all, can you drive there and ditch the car, or do you have to come by train? No, totally. This, mm-hmm. That's one of the options. We want to want to let folks know that you'd absolutely, you know, if you don't want to take the train or take alternative transportation, go, go ahead, take your car, but ditch it. Like I said, mm-hmm. park it for a while, and you can still take advantage of these amazing discounts on hotels, tours, segways, why, you know, sail, sailing. I mean, we're going to talk about all these amazing options that you can use just by going car-free. And, you know, again, just maybe parking it for a while. So, Laura, I'm looking at the um, car-free uh, website, and we have a link on Eat, Drink, Explorer for that, for people who want to check it out. The list is quite long of the discounts. Give us a couple of the premium, the highlights, the things okay. that people really Oh, yeah. Love. So with, with 33 hotels and 33 different transportation activity partners, that's 66 different ways to save, okay? Nice. And the number one way, of course, is on taking the train. If you go to the Santa Barbara carfree.org website, you can get a 20% discount on Amtrak's Pacific Surfliner trains to Santa Barbara. Wow. What a beautiful trip that is. If you're coming up from Southern yeah. California, uh, you fall, you hug the coast. Or if you're coming down from Northern it California. It is beautiful. I've done it a couple of times with the kids. There is a stretch north of Santa Barbara that you of, of California mm-hmm. coastline that you cannot see unless right. you are either a member of the Air Force or, <laughs> or on a train. <laughs> or on a train. Exactly. You're so right, Randall, because it goes right through Vandenberg Air Force. The tracks, the train mm-hmm. tracks, go right through Vandenberg Air Force Base. And, you know, it's it, there is no other way you're going to see it, you yeah. know, unless you're, And it's you beautiful. Know, it's untouched. Like, yeah, and it's so gorgeous because the train tracks, if you recall, in, in, in Southern California here, I mean, from Central California, from Slo down to San Diego... Literally, a lot of them run right against the ocean, right along, right along the Pacific. Mm-hmm. And it is incredible to be able to go on the train. And again, any destination in Santa Barbara County will allow you to get this 20% discount. You just go on SantaBarbaraCarFree.org, and you click on the Amtrak link, and you can, it's three days, and it is a three-day advance purchase, so like we can't go today, but we're all going to be busy today anyway. But, right. <laughs> all, you know, let's face it, but planning ahead, and you can get that 20% off. There is no other place that you can get that kind of discount. Even AAA or ARP doesn't have that 20% no. discount. So uh, it's really fun. So you get your Amtrak discount. Uh, we encourage folks to do that. And then when you get into Santa Barbara, the train station is only two blocks from the beach. And surrounded by partner hotels that offer between ten and fifty percent off their 50? rate. Fifty, yeah, five, five zero, <laughs> five, five, five zero, five yeah. zero. You know so, what's really cool? I'm just looking, uh, Laura. You have a discount for the Santa Barbara Zoo. That is a gr- that's a great zoo. Really great fun for the kids. And the Ty Warner Sea Center. Those are two really oh, fun yeah. things. And close if you're if you do arrive by Amtrak, it's. The, the location is prime. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Santa Barbara has this amazing electric shuttle fleet and, and biodiesel buses. This, the electric shuttle is so cute, and it's only 50 cents to get on the shuttle that goes up and down State Street and up and down the waterfront. So, you know, it's, there, there it is right there on, online. You can see it. A cute picture. Oh, good. You're watching the, the uh, video stream. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I think the fun part is that, you know, with, the, with combining the electric shuttle and then with with the discount, and here's how it works. So let's say you want to, you, let's say let's say you just drive this. Let's pretend you didn't take the train, but you stay at a hotel. You have 33 different choices, everything from cute little bed and breakfast inns all the way up to the Fest Parker Double Tree Resort, a five star bed and breakfast, four diamond, you know, hotels. We have everything to suit your taste and budget. You're staying at a hotel, and then you either show your train ticket. You show your bus pass. You can go to our website and download a car-free pledge certificate. Okay, so maybe you, you drove, you have a pledge certificate, or you ride your bike. You go to these 33 different places, like you said, Patty, the Ty Warner Sea Center, the zoo, the Museum of Natural History. Uh, you can go to different restaurants. There's, uh, you can rent a bike. You show you know, your train ticket, the certificate, your pledge certificate, or your bus pass. 
and you get these amazing discounts. How about wine tasting? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's Randall, cut to the chase. I'm <laughs> telling you, we have uh, half of the, there is actually, I think, eight different wine tour companies that will pick you up at your hotel or your destination, you know, wherever you're staying, and take you up to the Santa Inez Valley wine country. I also enjoy tasting wine right there in the downtown. You have oh, a yeah. number of fantastic tasting Nice rooms, options there. And you can and walk not to from mention, your hotel. Mm-hmm. Okay, how, I could totally see you doing this, Randall. <laughs> a pedicab will pick you up and take you to the Urban Wine Trail. Cool. There's 14 tasting rooms right, on, right off the beach in Santa Barbara. It's called the Urban Wine Trail uh-huh. in the Funk Zone. A pedicab, our Santa Barbara pedicab partner, will pick you up and take you around to the different tasting rooms on the Urban Wine Trail if you don't want to head out into the wine country. Now, I'm thinking, Laura, about uh, people that aren't, like when I think of going car free, I think of taking my bike down there and mm-hmm. getting around town that way or walking. But there are people that would like to take advantage of the car free that aren't as mobile. And so right. what sort of options for people who have some mobility issues uh, are there in in terms of this car free challenge, or not challenge, uh, car free uh, offer, offer, uh, offer. And by the way, the offer runs through the entire year. Okay. So, so this goes all the way. So you can start thinking about it now, and, and then it comes, you know, come to Santa Barbara, car free, you know, the, on the program all year long. Um, so here, the good question, Randall. We, ha- if let's say you just want to take a cruise, how about, a, you know, let's just take a sunset cruise. Maybe oh, you'd nice. like to take whale watching cruise. Mm-hmm. All those are kind of providers. We also have the little two water taxi. It'll take you back and forth. Let's say maybe you just you need you need a little help getting around. How about checking out Lucky Cab? They have Priuses as cabs. That's great. That so, is nice. So you're still and they give utilizing, you a twenty yeah. percent discount if you need to. You know, you just need a taxi. Go call Lucky Cab because they're hybrid vehicles. That's great. So there's a lot, you know, and plus if you're and then if you want to get a little more adventurous, you can run a Segway. You can rent a bike. Uh, bikes to go will actually bring you a bike to your to your your hotel. I mean, there's all kinds of options to put together the type of package that you want to do that feels good for you. I've always wanted to do one of those segways. I haven't. Yeah, because they look they've fun. Been pricey, but yes. if I'm getting a discount, maybe I'll do it now. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and that and that's the incentive. That's the joy of car free is that you are in. Inse- you know, in other words, we're not going to fine you for driving your car. We want to incentivize mm-hmm. you to park it for a while and enjoy life a little slower paced. See a little bit more, enjoy a little bit more, save more, and yeah. be healthy. So reward them for it. So so we're just a month into the year, a little over a month into the year. Have, are you having a lot of people taking advantage of these offers? Already, yeah. And because right now, let's face it, our weather here in, you know, in, in, in Central Coast, I mean, <laughs> let's face it, our weather is pretty gorgeous compared to the rest of the country. It rocks. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, people will come and they'll go, my gosh, I didn't know that I could like cycle or I could walk around I could take you know I'm not going to freeze to death I'm not shoveling you know <laughs> no shoveling involved There's no yeah. shoveling required you know I can go to the farmer's market I can stroll and not freeze and so this is a really prime time uh, to be car free and not that any time of the year isn't but but right now it's a very popular time to take the train and to just you know come park your car for a while and Enjoy Santa Barbara, the beautiful American Riviera. SantaBarbaraCarFree.org, right? Yes. And uh, we have a link. If you can't remember that, you can find the link on our program summary today. Lots of information there at EatDrinkExplore.com. All of our guests are linked there, uh, so uh, you can find it. And Laura, I'm I pledge. In 2013, to take advantage of this, <laughs> I want to hear. I want to hear about it. I want to come back and I want to talk to you about your car free experience. Randall. That's great. We'll have you. Promise? In, I promise. We'll have <laughs> okay, you in the studio next thing. time. You got it. You know this is. This is. You know your your fans know this now. This is what <laughs> You're on record. It's out there. Yes. <laughs> All right. Stick around, everyone, because we have more deals coming up with Gabe Saglia, Travel Zoo. He's one of our favorite guests, and that's coming up in just a moment. The holidays are now over, but Restaurant Month here in California is just getting started. As January unfolds with a wave of culinary diversity, the hottest place in the state to take it all in is along the Central Coast in San Luis Obispo County. Featured on local menus are ingredients grown on nearby farms, savory seafood caught that day in the Pacific Ocean, and grass-fed beef raised on the county's lush green hillsides, all served with a 
touch of Western flavor unique to the region. Not only are these offerings among the best in the nation, but these foods are paired with top local wines, craft brews, and outstanding scenery. When considering your 2013 New Year's resolutions, be sure to include an education for your palate, an experience that can only come from visiting the culinary destination that is San Luis Obispo County. Oh, and I'm sure saving money is on your list of resolutions as well. Perfect, because participating restaurants are offering substantial three-course menus for just $30. This is your opportunity to sample some of the many establishments you've talked about visiting but never have or revisiting some of your old favorites. And because Slow County is at the heart of Central Coast wine country, a new element is being added this year called Wine Wednesdays. Now, select restaurants will be pairing their menus with a local vintner's selections and look for other wine-related options as well. San Luis Obispo County's 6th Annual Restaurant Month runs January 1st through the 31st, but don't wait until the month is almost over to start enjoying this annual tradition. Don't hesitate. Find the restaurant of your choice and make your reservations now. For more information, head to sanluisobispocounty.com and start planning your next mouth-watering adventure. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. Across the nation, people are stepping up for their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, partners, sisters, and brothers. They're leading the way and walking to end Alzheimer's, the sixth leading cause of death in the nation. Together, we can reclaim the future. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Start a team. Join a team. Go to ALZ.org. For the latest video and information from today's show, head on over to EatDrinkExplore.com. We're constantly updating it with the latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Also, we're launching a new section of the site called California Love. This is where we recommend great companies. And the best part is every single business we feature is locally owned. We've checked them out and are confident you'll love them as much as we do. This is a great tool to have as we head into the holiday shopping season. Since you're already spending money, you might as well support your neighbor. We choose businesses that give back to the community, care about the environment, or use only the freshest local and organic ingredients. They also make their products here, not overseas. Our California Love business recommendation tool is still in the development stages, but will be available very soon at eatdrinkexplore.com. Eat, drink, explore media, your lifestyle information source. You've waited all week, and it's finally here. The Eat, Drink, Explore Weekly Travel Deals Extravaganza. You have. You have been waiting all week for this segment. I know it. I get emails from some of you. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? It is our travel uh, deals segment of the show, and I'm your host, Randall White. Joined by the lovely, talented Patty Piper, and this is where we hear insight from the best of the best, uh, the gurus of bargains, the luminaries of budget travel, and there is no bigger person in this role, I think, than one Gabe Saglia, who joins us uh, the first Sunday of every month. Hello, Gabe. Well, with a title like Luminary, I, I've really, you know, I've got to up, up the game here. <laughs> you got to step it up. up. My game. <laughs> well, it is game day, after all, so uh, Super Bowl <laughs> well, Sunday... So yeah. One one city where there are no deals to be had this weekend is New Orleans, as you as you know. Wow! Uh, yeah. But as soon as we as soon as we're done with this weekend, as soon as we're done with February, I think we'll start to see. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people will see the game and all the hoopla around it. They'll, they'll start to consider a New Orleans trip because maybe they haven't been there in years. And as you look at, I'd say you know, end of uh, middle to end of spring is when the deals will start to really pop up there. Uh, in New Orleans, but well, we've got some other great deals. Um, you know, not all that far away, including in beautiful, you know, San Diego. Uh, yeah. Randy, where I used to live back in the day, and I, I love to, to visit there. There's a place in La Jolla 
called the La Valencia Hotel. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you if you know La Jolla and you walk down Prospect Street, the main track there, yes. you walk right by this beautiful pink building. It's called the Pink Lady, and it's and it's a beautiful Mediterranean style hotel overlooking the, the La Jolla Cove. Uh, and uh, rates usually start at about three seventy five. Now down to one ninety five. Mm. And my favorite part of this deal, which travels through April, is you get a welcome amenity, a bottle of wine, and Swiss chocolate filled pink macaroons. Oh, cool! Uh, wow. Yeah. So uh, the great hotel, unusual to get a deal out of this property. So uh, yeah, check it out. Love Valencia for one ninety five. What is it with pink and famous hotels? You have the Madonna <laughs> Inn, you have the big pink hotel that's right on Waikiki Beach, uh, the Royal Hawaiian. Well, you know what? The ladies love it, and let's face it, it's become a very manly uh, hue as well. So, um, I, in fact, as we speak, I'm wearing a, a blue and pink tie. Oh, so well, it, see? It appeals to, all, to everybody. <laughs> all, all pleasing colors. Let's go to uh, Nevada go next. And where, go green. And go gr- oh, right. Green Valley Ranch. I like that. Way to go. That's right. This is the um, you know, one way to save. And I'm Vegas is a you know bastion for, for for deals. No matter you know, as long as you avoid holiday weekends, great deals to be had. One way to save money is to kind of stay just to the strip there. And there's a, in Henderson, which is about ten minutes away. There's the uh, Four Diamond Green Valley Ranch, eight acres. It's got its uh, in this beautiful thirty thousand square foot spa. It's got a sand bottom pool. It's got its own casino. Yeah. But then you're just a couple of minutes away from the strip. Uh, Fifty nine dollars a night for travel uh, between now and May. That's for weekdays. A weekend rate is to about thirty bucks more. Eighty nine dollars a night. But you know, a lot of people like to do this kind of a uh, off the strip getaway. They don't even you know do the Vegas thing. Right. You know the way a lot of us think of it. They just kind of stay uh, just off strip and enjoy a little bit of a better bargain. And you know, luxurious things at the same time. Did I hear that correctly? Fifty nine. Yes. Five nine. Five nine. Oh yeah. Sixty percent off. That's deal. amazing. Yeah. That's a good deal. That is a great deal. Love it. Let's stay in the desert, but uh, bring it home to California. Yeah. Okay. Now this is a great little property. It's called the Belamonte Hot Springs Resort and Spa. This is in Desert Hot Springs, surrounded by the beautiful San Jacinto Mountains. A trip advisor last year called it the best relaxation and spa hotel in the country. Now, the neat thing about this property uh, is that it's all throughout the property there are these hot mineral water pools that bubble between 90 and 148 degrees. Whoa. People love taking dips in these. A lot of people think they have curative properties. Uh, and uh, a two-night stay here will cost you $179, usually close to 400 but now two nights, 179 and that comes with a pair of $50 massage credits and a bottle of wine at check-in. This is for travel right now all the way through September. Prices naturally dip in the desert during the summer months, but if you can get away over the next couple of months when rates in the desert communities you know, are at their peak, yeah. it's an especially good deal. If you can only do a one-night getaway, the price tag, even with the massage credits, is $99. But I like the two-nighter, $179. Hey, Gabe, is Desert Hot Springs, is that in the Coachella Valley? It's in the Coachella Valley. It's um, it's uh, I want to say it's about fifteen to twenty minutes from downtown Palm Springs. Okay. And as you know, the um, uh, Joshua Tree National Park is, is you know just a quick drive uh, away from there as well. I never make it out of wow. Palm Springs. I've been to Palm <laughs> Desert, which is uh, just uh, south of Palm Springs, mm-hmm. but I haven't really explored. I know that in the Coachella Valley has like a lot of places <clears throat> to visit, right? Uh, and I love the date shakes. I can typically only have one because they're on the sweet side. Yeah, but it's a milkshake made with, with dates, dates, and it's delicious. And if you add a little uh, brandy into it, it becomes oh. sort of a, a brandy Alexander plus. <laughs> dates <laughs> it's really good yeah. oh, that's why goodness. I only have one. yeah <laughs> <laughs> sounds potent but now you have incentive to explore a little bit that sounds amazing it does sound and bottle of wine on check mm-hmm. like okay so one of my favorite places monterey bay you have a great deal there yeah so this is you know um i always wish there were more like great properties in monterey personally but this is one of the really i think one of the neat ones it's the portola hotel uh, and spa this is a four-star property it overlooks the bay um, you're right next to Fisherman's Wharf. You can, you know, you're at, close to Canary Row, Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, but it's just a beautiful four-star uh, property right by the boats there. $139 a night right now uh, to rate all for travel May. It includes weekends, so that makes it an especially good deal. And uh, again, one of one of my favorite parts of this deal: a buffet breakfast with unlimited mimosas. 
Oh, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> that got Randall's okay. attention. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, 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 after your date shake uh, comment, I think that if you, know, if you can do enough of these unlimited mimosas, you may, you know, it's almost like staying there for free. Yeah. You? <laughs> you can get your money's worth. Yeah. Well, yeah. At the rate that we enjoy them, I think it would be. Uh, who's, the, who's the parent company of the Portola? Uh, you know, you know I'm, I can check and get back to you on that. I, I um, that's I've, a good question. But, it, you know, it's, it's one of these consistently highly reviewed properties. And if you you know, I, I just love the visuals of the boats on the water and expansive, you know, uh, ocean in the distance. And oh, yeah. this is a property that allows you to have, and you, you know, you're in the heart there of Fisherman's Wharf. I'm on their site right now, and it's not um, it's jumping not evident. out at me, <laughs> uh, which usually it does. I just, uh, I was just wondering. I knew, I don't think it's a Kempton. Um, it's not a Kempton hotel. No. And so, but I have, I've heard such great things about the Portola that I yeah, was, was I, curious. I've never stayed there, but we lived up there in that area. So took the kids to Cannery Row all the time and the whole surrounding area. It's a beautiful hotel, never been in it, but the surrounding area is worth almost staying anywhere just to be able mm-hmm. to this, check it out. This would make a great staycation for any of our KSCO AM uh, right. 1080 listeners, which is uh, Santa Cruz, Monterey, uh, San Jose area. This is a perfect getaway after the big game today. Celebrate the Niner win. <laughs> With a mimosa breakfast. Niner win. I like it. Right. Uh, Gabe, uh, we have time for quickly for one more. What do you got? Uh, well, you know, if you want to hop on a plane, uh, Jamaica, uh, the neat thing about this deal is that you're locking in a rate for May through June travel. Still not, uh, you know, um, you know, it's peak season now in a place like Jamaica, but you can still get some great weather before it gets too hot in May and June. So this is up Fair out of Los Angeles. Similar price they got from uh, San Francisco, and even some of the people here put them down the coast, not that much more. But uh, Air Force of Los Angeles make up four nights at the Rio de Grill Resort, which is an all-inclusive property. So all-inclusive that they even have liquor dispensers inside the room. Did they uh, have what dispensers? Liquor. liquor oh, liquor dispensers. Whoa! Room. So <laughs> this is a boozy... <laughs> <it is>. You don't <laughs> have to leave the room to have the all-you-can-drink experience. Uh, but this is this is a, a really a beautiful four star property right there on the water. I gotta make real. Uh, I gotta stop you there, Gabe. I'm sorry. We have only 10 seconds left, and I wanted to thank you. Uh, Travelzoo.com. We have a link at the website. Gabe Saglia. We're back in just a moment. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly.
You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. Indeed, and a very good Super Bowl morning to you. What else? Yes. Super, I know it's super. Bowl, I don't know how to say, but uh, I believe we have uh, someone who can tell us here in just a moment. At any rate, happy Super Bowl Sunday, or Patty, ha- what were we calling it? Uh, super Sunday. Super. Super, super Sunday, fun Sunday Fun Day. Sunday Fun Day. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was just 10 minutes ago. How do we forget that? <laughs> <laughs> That's Patty Pyburn's wonderful voice you hear and likely wake up to on KCOY CBS 12 Monday through Friday. And then on Sunday, you get a little extra sprinkling of her. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to spice up your day. Uh, Patty, what are, your show now is 5 to 7? We are 5 to 7 here in the uh, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara County area. And then um, up north on KION, we, I guess, yeah, same time frame up there as well. Same time. Yeah, same bat channel. Uh, oh, you, you <laughs> I was going to say that, but I let you take You got to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's sopa? Yeah. Okay, so super sopa. And Oy. cheers, Randall and, White. Oh, and cheers. Our uh, chef and good friend, Chris Douglas, will be joining us. Uh, this is our but Super we, Bowl blowout We put hour. him to work already. We did put him to work because, uh, you know, each city represented in the Super Bowl this year, uh, we have San Francisco, of course. We have Baltimore, but we also have New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Uh, they each have their signature drinks uh, and drinks that were started there type mm-hmm. of thing. Well, uh, San Francisco is where the Irish coffee began in the United they States. They know what they're doing in San Francisco. They really do. A, a wonderful little spot at Fisherman's Wharf called the Buena Vista. If you ever mm-hmm. get a chance, uh, hop in there. They literally line the glasses up at like, you know, 20 at a time. And just make a and hole. Just right on down the <laughs> right on down the line uh, with the, uh, I'm sure the Buena Vista will be a popular spot today uh, as will a number mm-hmm. of uh, bars you think <laughs> yes, <that laughs> like every thing. single one that has a television <laughs> but our friend chris he's not only a chef when it comes to uh you know foods he's also uh quite a culinary mixer upper or a drink mixer upper so a mixologist a mixologist thank you so <laughs> he uh, made us an irish coffee uh this morning with true james jameson and ah. he made the whipped cream that you know it's mm. not a it's not canned at the store you right know? Yeah, so it's the gonna, real deal. I'm gonna do a little sippy here. Wait, mm-hmm. Hold on, it's good stuff. Oh, now that's delicious. That's how to start a Super Bowl <laughs> yeah. Sunday. I can tell you right now. All right, I do need to tell you right now, as a matter of fact, that this hour of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio is brought to you by the wonderful people at Eberly Winery in Paso Robles. <laughs> Open daily from ten in the morning until six. Uh, my guess is that you'll want to get there prior to the game today. So plenty of time to go wine tasting prior to the big Super Bowl. And then uh, complimentary wine tasting and cave tours. So sort of a nice way, sort of a twist on a traditional Super Bowl. You know, mm-hmm. fit that into your routine. Wine Spectator Magazine, by the way, voted their tours the best on the Central Coast. That's pretty cool. Eberly Winery, located on 46 East in Paso Robles. You can log on to Eberly, that's E-B-E-R-L-E, winery.com. Patty, how do you like your Irish coffee? I like it. It's a little strong. <laughs> it's a, Just, oh. you know, early in the morning for a little Jameson. <laughs> but hey... Oh. Let's get the party started. We'll, we'll pace it out over the. I'm, uh, s- I'm sipping over the hour exactly. <laughs> um, but and then you can add a, once it gets about halfway, you can add a little extra coffee to mm-hmm. warm it up again. <laughs> the coffee came from Pete's downstairs. Maybe that's why this is one of the better Irish coffees. It's I've really ever good because the because co- the coffee is delicious, mm-hmm. and then uh, with that homemade whipped cream. Uh, <laughs> What's not to love? I know. This is the first uh, dairy product I've had in a month. Wow. Uh, this is, is part of your your vegan. I was vegan for the month of experimentation. January, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I didn't start until my birthday, which is January third. Today's February third. And so, so perfect. Yeah. So good timing. On that, all right. I just heard the uh, sound that lets us know we're just about uh, headed into a short, short commercial break here. It's only one minute long, and then we kick off our Super Bowl spectacular. Lots of great information coming up in this next hour, especially if you're hosting a Super Bowl party. Mm -hmm. You'll want tips from Chef Chris and uh, also uh, everything you ever wanted to know about avocados. (laughs) I'm your host, Randall White, Patty Piper. 
It will be a while before we see the labeling of genetically modified foods, but that doesn't mean you can't be a smart shopper and head to the store armed with knowledge. Our California Love website has a list of local companies producing food right here in California that are GMO-free and, in most cases, organic, too. Head to CA, as in California, L-U-V, as in shorthand for love, dot com. It's that easy to find our list of local companies with your health in mind. You can also find this list on our Apple and Android smartphone and tablet apps, which are absolutely free in the App Store. Simply search Eat, Drink, Explore and download it to your device. Our California Love website also contains a vegetable and fruit chart so you can more easily buy local produce that's in season. Also, fresh and local recipes from the farmer's market. Head there. Check it out right now. C-A-L-U-V dot com. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Fabulous. Live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Amazing. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. Good Super Bowl morning, everyone. Great to have you with us. Go Niners. I'm just going to put it out there. I know there's probably some Baltimore fans listening, but uh, sorry. Lifelong... <laughs> Lifelong 49er fan, I can't help it. If you're uh, watching us online right now via the Eat, Drink, Explore website or Ustream, Facebook, Twitter, any possible way that you may be linked to our video, a very good day to you. You can see that I am in my crimson and gold right now. Uh, the only day of the year I wear this <laughs> combination. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, That is in honor of the 49ers uh, game day today in Nolens. Of course, we have San Francisco represented, we have Baltimore represented, and then we have the Crescent City that is a part of the whole mix. So talk about some culinary combinations there. Uh, San Francisco and New Orleans, of course, are well known for their long culinary history. Baltimore, a little thinner on the... um, when I was researching for the show, uh, it was mm-hmm. difficult to find. I mean, crab cakes, boom. You know, you, I mean, that's the obvious. Done. <laughs> then you, once you get past that, it's uh, <clears throat> sort of... You know, not a lot of tradition. <laughs> not a lot to choose from. Mm-hmm. And then uh, drinks wise as well, they don't have a really long drink history. There is a drink called the Raven that is specifically it's purple. fairly fairly it, new. Yeah, it's put together just for you know. There's no history behind it, so um, we're going to leave Baltimore out a lot, and that's not <laughs> on my part. I mean, that is <laughs> that is not the bias from me. It's just the, a fact, you know, that we yeah. there's not much to choose from. Unless someone out there knows differently and, le- and wants to let us know what a, a, a tradition that we missed. Right. Let us in on the goods yeah. uh, in that case. <laughs> I do want, when it comes to drinks, I do want to say briefly, uh, there is was an interesting <clears throat> story that we uh, posted this week at eatdrinkexplore.com regarding uh, two breweries from the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anchor Steam, of course, is a long-standing San Francisco tradition. Fascinating story behind that. It was just about to go out of business uh, years ago. Uh, I think in I want to say like the seventies, uh, maybe the eighties and uh, early eighties. And a guy by the name of Fritz Maytag, uh, associated with your washer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was all right. This is the story. I don't know how much of it is urban legend and how much of it. Okay, but let's hear it. I've met Fritz before, but I didn't ask him about the validity of this story. Um, (laughs) He was in a bar and he ordered this uh, anchor steam and he really enjoyed it and said, this is this is great, you know, and they're like, well, enjoy it because the brewery is going out of business and this is like the last batch or something like that. And so he goes, he thought to himself and thought, no, it's not. It's not going out of business and bought it. Whoa, uh, Chris! Is that the story you heard too? Our friend Chris is in the can you, house. Can you can he, you validate that? He he cannot verify it, but <laughs> it, you've heard that too, Anthony. Yeah, back in the day. So uh, at any rate, it's a great story. I don't know how true it is, but uh, Anchor Steam did survive and has become a stalwart of the uh, brewing community there in San Francisco. Well, uh, the people at a flying dog brewery in mm-hmm. Maryland. It's about an hour's drive from the where the Baltimore Ravens play. Uh, they have been betting against other breweries uh, throughout this whole NFL season. They uh, they placed a bet against a Harpoon brewery out of uh, Boston mm-hmm. for the last game. And then they decided to contact the people at Anchor and say, here's the deal. The losing team, the brewery, you know, associated with the losing team. Okay. 
has to pour the brewery associated with the winning team's beer on draft in their tasting room. <laughs> and the all the people working at the brewery have to be dressed in garb. Ah, you know, like, yeah. I'm guessing it's going to be 49er garb. Right. And so... Uh, <laughs> So they'll be they'll be serving anchor in not in Baltimore. It's a town outside of Baltimore, but uh-huh. they'll be serving anchor on draft there. And then as they're giving tours of the brewery, they'll be wearing 49er uniforms. Ooh, ouch! <laughs> if if everything goes the way if that it we goes- hope it does, and I'm knocking on wood again because I am not jinxing this day. Can you imagine if oh, it all gosh. goes south and then uh, the news networks are like? Well, you know, Randall White jinxed it. Uh, and th- that's It's going to be all your fault. When they start looking at the plays, you know, the 49ers did oh, everything they gosh. did was according to how they were supposed to do it. If he, that one guy just kept his mouth shut. <laughs> so. so just to let you know, Wikipedia yes. says in 1965, Frederick Lewis Maytag III oh, uh-huh. bought the brewery, saving it from closure. Okay. So at least a portion of the story is true. We know that. I mean, well. The basic facts. It's Wikipedia. It's Wikipedia. <laughs> So, there you go. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? So we're right back at zero again. We don't, we we're not sure uh, where it all stands. Okay. Uh, then we are going to talk about, uh, coming up this hour, New Orleans uh, official drink. And okay. what do you think it is? Just off the top of your head. Do you, have, do you think? Okay. So Anthony, our audio guy, says hurricane. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about the hurricane recently. I don't know if that is their uh-huh. official drink or not. I- Mm. Okay, people people in the car right now listening are or yelling wherever. hurricane. Uh, if you said hurricane, you're wrong. Um, it's something else. It is not the hurricane. That it was the, the obvious answer. What, Chris? Uh, the Sazerac. The, the Sazerac. Sazerac. Oh, okay. Is the ofi- it was the um, Louisiana legislature. Actually, put it in the book. <laughs> it's law. It's law that the official drink of New Orleans is the Sazerac. You can imagine they might not want the drink to be the Hurricane. Well, w- uh, if right. you think about recent history, yes. So uh, no, it's the Sazerac, and we'll talk about how you make one of those coming up. We'll also talk about how you make an official uh, San Francisco version of the Irish coffee. The Irish Ooh. coffee did start <clears throat> a version of it started at an airport in Ireland. And there was a guy uh, drinking at the airport there, had one before he caught mm-hmm. his flight to San Francisco, got to San Francisco and said, that was really good. We need to I do that more. here. But all it was was just, you know, Irish whiskey and uh-huh. coffee. So they've added a little sugar and, and whipped cream to the San Francisco version. And of it's course. And it's been a hit ever since. <laughs> right. So, of course. <laughs> and then the official <laughs> drink of Baltimore. Um, I don't know. There, hmm. I don't think there is one. Interesting. So we don't really have anywhere to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> what are they doing in Bar- Baltimore? <laughs> and then, do you know that the number of Hass avocados, not Haas, in right. fact, if you see it at a grocery store spelled H A A S, go to the produce person and, tell and them ask them to change it to H A S S. And it's pronounced Hass like your rear end. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest way to, you know, get. Get it there. Or as my mom says, don't sass me. Don't sass. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's ha- has like has. sass. Okay. Uh, and the reason we know that that's the pronunciation is because that was the guy's last name. And uh, I've spoken with someone whose uh, father worked with Mr. Hass. Uh, on And confirms that and that is confirms. correct. In fact, I've been to where the wood from the mother Hass tree is housed. It is in Ventura County. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've... Actually, this is the tree that all other Hass avocados came from. Every single Hass in the world. If I remember from when you did this a, a few years back, they use the wood from the tree to make gavels and for stuff. like the head of the avocado International association. Hass organization. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so, uh, you know, it's unimpressive. It's not a, tor- you know, you're not even allowed to go there. It's private property. It's somebody's barn <laughs> where it's held, you know, but uh, you go in there and it was weird to touch it. Like I was touching the tree thinking, okay, 90 plus percent of every avocado eaten in the world today is a Hass avocado. And all of those avocados came from this mother tree. That's just so weird when you think, I don't know, to me it is. It, no, yeah. I agree. So we Who will, knew? We will speak with the head of the United States Hass Avocado Organization, uh, who's touching down right about now in Zurich, Switzerland. So Very cool. We're just sort of floating his segment. Randall, I found, found a drink online called the Baltimore Zoo. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll share that, too. Good. Yeah. I need some research help. Okay. <laughs> we're on it. Email us if you know a drink. Baltimore. We're back in a moment.
The holidays are now over, but Restaurant Month here in California is just getting started as January unfolds with a wave of culinary diversity. The hottest place in the state to take it all in is along the Central Coast in San Luis Obispo County. Featured on local menus are ingredients grown on nearby farms, savory seafood caught that day in the Pacific Ocean, and grass-fed beef raised on the county's lush green hillsides, all served with a touch of western flavor unique to the region. Not only are these offerings among the best in the nation, but these foods are paired with top local wines, craft brews, and outstanding scenery. When considering your 2013 New Year's resolutions, be sure to include an education for your palate, an experience that can only come from visiting the culinary destination that is San Luis Obispo County. Oh, and I'm sure saving money is on your list of resolutions as well. Perfect, because participating restaurants are offering substantial three-course menus for just $30. This is your opportunity to sample some of the many establishments you've talked about visiting but never have or revisiting some of your old favorites. And because Slow County is at the heart of Central Coast wine country, a new element is being added this year called Wine Wednesdays. Now, select restaurants will be pairing their menus with a local vintner's selections and look for other wine-related options as well. San Luis Obispo County's 6th Annual Restaurant Month runs January 1st through the 31st, but don't wait until the month is almost over to start enjoying this annual tradition. Don't hesitate. Find the restaurant of your choice and make your reservations now. For more information, head to sanluisobispocounty.com and start planning your next mouth-watering adventure. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to decide? This is Annie Lennox of New Rhythmics for Rad. Please don't drink and drive. And don't drive if someone else has been drinking. Thank you. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Across the nation, people are stepping up for their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, partners, sisters, and brothers. They're leading the way and walking to end Alzheimer's, the sixth leading cause of death in the nation. Together, we can reclaim the future. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Start a team. Join a team. Go to ALZ.org. For the latest video and information from today's show, head on over to EatDrinkExplore.com. We're constantly updating it with the latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Also, we're launching a new section of the site called California Love. This is where we recommend great companies. And the best part is every single business we feature is locally owned. We've checked them out and are confident you'll love them as much as we do. This is a great tool to have as we head into the holiday shopping season. Since you're already spending money, you might as well support your neighbor. We choose businesses that give back to the community, care about the environment, or use only the freshest local and organic ingredients. They also make their products here, not overseas. Our California Love business recommendation tool is still in the development stages, but will be available very soon at EatDrinkExplore.com. Eat, Drink, Explore Media, your lifestyle information source. bird tweet that I know and love. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what does a raven like? They have that like kind of it's like they caw. Yeah. Are they related to crows? Uh, I think so. That, that sounds right. Yeah. Let's say they are. Okay. <laughs> Today they are. <laughs> the only uh, Edgar Allan Poe right, the, wrote the story mm-hmm. about the raven, right? Yes. He had a famous uh, poem 
Yes, uh, that, that is true. Good morning, everyone. Great to have you with us on this Super Bowl Sunday, uh, nine nineteen, the time now, and we're really looking forward to the big matchup coming later today, as I'm sure many of you are. This is the Eat Drink Explore Radio Network. Patty Piper in there, Randall White here, and many of you will be serving some form of avocado today. Uh, it will likely be a Hass, and it. You know, it might be guacamole. It might be mm-hmm. served on a sandwich. Uh, you know, but nachos, one, nachos, one way or another. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of avocados will be served. And joining us on the line right now from Zurich, Switzerland, which I think is pretty cool. We've never had anyone on from Zurich before. Is uh, Emiliano Escobedo? He's the executive director of the Hass Avocado Board. Welcome to the program, Emiliano. Good morning. How was the Thank flight? Thank you for having me. You went well. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're standing there, so that's always a good sign, <laughs> right? <laughs> following, uh, following a flight. Uh, so we were talking during the show uh, prior to your segment here that uh, Hass avocados are by far, I mean, by far the most popular avocado in the world. Isn't that right? That is correct. In fact, well, in the United States, 95% of all avocados consumed are Hass avocados. 95%. Wow. And why is that? They're just, you know, they're known for their creamy texture. They have really great flavor. Um, they, uh, they, they make the best guacamole, um, you know. And, and, and they're also, commercially, they're a great variety. You can, you can kind of truck them across the country. You can import them into the U.S. And they will last longer than uh, many other avocados and will not suffer any damages that typically happen when you're shipping fruit from one from one farm to a packing house and then into a truck to go to a specific market. So they're durable. They're durable, <clears throat> exactly. Durable and tasty. <laughs> right. And they're a California original. They got started in La Habra Heights, California, correct? That is correct. Yeah, it's the variety that was started by Mr. Hatz. And how and did now he... It's grown, and now it's grown in, in many places outside of California. Right, but how did he come up with this one particular avocado? What was what's behind it? Well, he was basically testing different varieties and grafting varieties into other varieties, and eventually came up with the Hass avocado, which he was a postman uh, back in the 90, early 1900s. So it's it's a fun, kind of fun story, uh, but it's a great gift to the world when you think about it. I mean, yeah. it's a Super Bowl. I don't. Over I think 158 he... million. Hass avocados will be consumed. So. How many? 158 million? 100 and, yeah, 158 million Hass avocados will be consumed. And if you convert that to pounds, it's about 79 million pounds of avocados. Jeez. Are going to be consumed. That's about one for every three people in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a, we have a fun way of saying it. If you were to take the stadium and fill it up with avocados, you would have from Enfield to Enfield 30 feet. You will fill up the stadium thirty feet. That's a <laughs> wow. lot. Kind of like almost to the that, almost to that. That is a at the end post, you know? yeah. That is a Super Bowl of guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> Very well put, <laughs> Patty. <laughs> and they haven't always been this popular uh, for the Super Bowl. I saw some statistics that uh, your organization put out that's shown quite a jump over the past decade or so. That is correct. Um, about ten years ago, only eight million pounds of avocados were consumed. So this, you know, you're looking at almost tenfold that for this season. And, and really the reason for that is, first, you can't make guacamole without as avocados, like we just said. Right. But also, consumers are going beyond traditional guacamole to spice up their parties. You know, you were talking about how, or just when you introduced me, how people were going to use avocados. But, you know, sandwiches, guacamole, but also people, believe it or not, are being a little more adventurous, and they're adding fruit like mango or pineapple, to make it a little bit of a tropical flair. And then they, they're they also trying it with seafood, uh, adding crab and, and so on. Or you also have, a, a, one of my favorites is uh, a BLT guacamole, which is bacon and tomato with avocados. And it's just 
to die for. We're speaking with Emiliano Escobedo. He's uh, the executive director of the Haas Avocado Board. <clears throat> speaking with us from Zurich, Switzerland at the airport there, which I think is uh, kind of fun. We are sharing a recipe. We're talking about people experimenting mm -hmm. with different ways to serve it. It is called the Tomatillo Touchdown Guacamole. It is courtesy of avocadocentral.com, but wow. you can find it at eatrickexplore.com. And it uh, looks like it's a pretty tasty... If I wasn't going out to see the game today, it, I would be making it. But I'll make it in the days to come, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> it sounds really good. Although what he was just talking about a moment ago, the, I want to hear more about the bacon uh, tomato. I'm not a tomato fan, but I can eat it in some forms. And uh, tell, tell us what that is, the bacon one you were talking about. Well, you basically grab avocados fresh avocados, and you also, you know, you, you'll make some bacon bacon and chop it up in small pieces. And then you're going to add to your guacamole, you're going to add, it's just you make a traditional guacamole, which is just onion, a little bit of jalapeno, and uh, cilantro, and then you add the bacon mm. and tomatoes. I love now, there's also, yeah, there's, a, there's also a winter, and I know that in California, we don't really have a strong winter that was cold a couple of weeks ago, but you can also add some sun-dried tomatoes to it, and it's actually really, really yummy. Oh, that would be good. Sounds really good. Hey, so um, speaking of California, what percentage of the Hass avocados grown in the U.S. are grown here in the Golden State? Almost all of them. Of, of 90%, 95, 99% of all avocados consumed in the United States uh, are, well, of the California grown, uh, I'm sorry, let me restate that, about 95% of those avocados that are grown in the United States are grown in California. Okay, that makes sense. You know, uh, when I used to live Majority. when I used to live in the Midwest, Emiliano, and I would go out to eat, if a restaurant had a burger or a sandwich or an omelet that had avocado in it, it was instantly called the California right. burger, the California <laughs> sando, the yes. California omelet. You know, all you had to do was add avocado. And you had a California something. Yes. <laughs> right, right, right. The yeah, I mean, you know, one of the other things that is that is uh, boosting the consumption of hash avocados, people are making healthier choices, you know, and uh, avocados fit perfectly whenever you're trying to have a, a nutrient-dense um, diet. Um, as you know, or you, you may not have spoken about this already, but avocados are a nutrient booster, mm -hmm. and they contain naturally good fats nearly 20 vitamins and minerals. So it's a really nice package when you bite into that avocado or slice into it. You're getting a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals, and they're monosaturated fats, which are good for um, you know, fighting and, and cardiovascular diseases. I think we've learned over time now that it's not. We there was a period there in the late '80s, '90s where it was like we need to cut fat out if of our diet. If you eat fat, you are fat completely, right? Yes. And then we've, uh, you know, as we've evolved and learned about uh, how food works, fats are actually a good way to diet. Uh, and avocado fat it, and avocado oil is great to cook with because it's has a really high smoke point. You can get that oil nice and hot. That is right. And it's, uh, it's the monosaturated fats that are in the avocado. They're similar to all, what the fat that you'll find in olive oil. And so you always have good fats. You have bad fats, and avocados have plenty of good fats, which make it an ideal, an ideal uh, dish. Because, you know, fat carries taste. So that's why whenever you add an avocado to anything, and you're really going to highlight that taste. If you're making tacos, or if you're making guacamole, or if you're just having it by itself with a little bit of salt and lemon, like the avocado avocado purists would, um, you always get that really nice flavor. And you can also do it in smoothies. You could do it with you know with yogurt and honey, and you can add different kinds of fruits. So it's all it's the great versatility about it. I've heard that. about people putting it in smoothies, and I think that's very cool. AvocadoCentral.com, Emiliano Escobedo. The executive director of the Haas Avocado Board. Thank you so much for joining us from Zurich. I imagine you have some good news to spread about avocados there in Europe, so we'll let you go and do that. Thank you so much. Have a great Super Bowl day. Thank you. Stick around, everyone. This last half hour is all about your Super Bowl party and how to really make it sing. We're back in just a moment.
Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. SS Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today by contacting the team you need. Head to SS Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the pet of the leaders together. You see me around the neighborhood and you tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we can grow up to be whatever we want. I want to grow up to be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everybody. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide eight meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we are Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows, and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.npca.org. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air. We're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. This is Betty White. I know you don't need one more thing to worry about, but listen. High blood pressure can cause kidney damage, blindness, heart attack, stroke. And you can have high blood pressure even if you feel all right. One in seven adults has it, but it's easy to get your blood pressure checked, and you can treat it if it is too high. So don't worry about it. Don't ignore it. Just see your doctor and check it out. For your free booklet, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Here now is your fabulous host, Mr. Randall White. And a very good day, everyone. Great to have you joining us on this uh, Super Sunday fun day. Super Bowl Sunday, of course. And go 49ers is my personal (laughs) opinion. (laughs) And I'm sure many of yours as well because our... uh, Joe is broadcast primarily to Northern and Central California, so uh, I have a feeling that a lot of you listening are 49er fans. At any rate, whether whoever you're pulling for, or whomever you're pulling for, <laughs> would that be right, Patty? I think it sound, whomever sounds right. I don't know. I think that would be right. 
Don't ask me. I'm sorry. Whomever you're pulling for, <laughs> you're right. likely either throwing or attending <clears throat> a Super Bowl party. And if you are and are responsible for bringing a dish or if you're throwing a party and responsible for providing a number of dishes, you will want to tune into this segment because we are bringing to you Chef Christopher Douglas. Chris uh, joins us from the studio. He's actually in studio, which is pretty cool. And uh, he is a chef up in the Bay Area. And I've known Chris for more than 20 years. He is a phenomenal cook. He's one of those people that post a lot of food porn on his um, <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> Whatever he's out and about, you know. I just wonder if Chris is saying, okay, why did I agree to come? <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> right. uh, Chris, welcome to the program. This is the, this is the first. I've never had you on the show before. No, thank you. This is, uh, this is great. So, well, uh, Although I, I almost missed it because I couldn't get out of your house this morning. Right. <laughs> uh, Chris you were is, trapped. Chris and his girlfriend, Michelle, are staying at, uh, at, our, at uh, Casa Teodosio, <laughs> and the problem is uh, getting out of our garage is kind of a trick if you don't know the combo to open it. And then uh, our gate to get into the other portion of the house has a lock on it. So, so are you trying to keep people out or in? I'm confused. We don't have a lot of friends, Patty. And so when they when they come to the house, we don't, you know, we have to keep them there. Yeah. So uh, that, that's what happened. But uh, Chris was uh, really nice last night to fry us up uh, some crab cakes, which is the one thing that does come from the Baltimore area that is uh, pretty delicious. But you put a West Coast spin on it. Yeah, I, um, you know, Dungeness crab. I, it's a uh, local Sweeter, mm -hmm. wonderful. So of course we use that. And um, what do they typically use in Baltimore? Blue or something? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. typically they put um, Ritz or not Ritz, but crackers mm -hmm. in as a binder. And okay, you know, I try to make a crab cake that really is uh, really crab. You know, I try to. Um, it's not all uh, more crab, less filler. Yeah, less filler, more crab. You know. Um, a little bit of red pepper, maybe mm. a little celery, but very fine, mm -hmm. you know, some chive, and then basically a little lemon, lemon zest, and, and let the crab kind of speak for itself. Speak for itself. Exactly. I lo we're showing a, a picture of the finished product from last night's crab cakes that were just delicious. They were so good. But let's uh, walk through the steps uh, for people, starting with uh, the ingredients. You already mentioned the red pepper. Uh, you can. Ro it looks like you roasted the one you have here. Um, yeah, I did use a, a roasted pepper that was in the picture. However, mm -hmm. um, you know, just a, a red bell is fine. Um, yeah. I, I do that, but you can certainly sub really anything to your liking. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love a little celery. I like to take the celery leaf and uh, chop a little of that up. That has a lot of flavor in the it celery does. leaf. It's great. It adds a, you know... A nice little brightness as, as well. And then uh, there's parsley here. Is that Italian parsley? Or yeah, just... it's uh, Italian flat uh -huh. leaf parsley. Does it matter if you use a Meyer lemon or just a standard lemon? Uh, no. You can use Meyer's, uh, regular lemon. I like to zest it and then throw that zest in and then squeeze, uh, you know, the juice. Mm -hmm. So you don't, uh, so I didn't have a zester at home last night. So how, what did you improvise? What did you do? A cheese grater with a yeah. okay. tiny grain, you know, the, the tiny the one. The smallest right. option. Uh -huh. And okay. so uh, we zested two lemons and then used the juice of both because they weren't uh, super juicy lemons, but your mm -hmm. recipe calls for the juice of one if you have a nice juicy lemon. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's up to you. Uh, obviously, some are juicier than, right. than others. <laughs> um, you can kind of taste, you yeah. know, you just kind of want to taste a little lemon, a little brightness. Some you know acidity, if I guess, if you will. And to zest the lemon, um, you're just really taking off that uh, bright that yellow you, layer. Exactly. If you get down into the pith, into the what, it yeah. gets a little bitter. And mm -hmm. I mean, truth, I, I don't think you'll really taste it after the crab and everything else that goes into it. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's best not to get into the pith. So, yeah. Chris, we're showing a shot now of you adding a yellowish mayonnaise to the to the mixture. That's aioli, which is basically mm. garlic mayonnaise, right? Yeah, I do put a little aioli. You can d uh, definitely use regular mayonnaise. Um, I think that's actually Dijon because oh, I, okay. I do um, put Dijon in a oh, couple tablespoons yum. per pound. And once again, last night we didn't have Dijon at the <clears throat> house. Surprisingly, we just had uh, like a yellow that, mustard, which worked as well. That is and, surprising. And Chris, you're a big fan <clears throat> of improvising, uh, not sticking so close to the recipe that you get all <laughs> bound up about it, right? Well, I think recipes are guidelines. I think they're there to reference, and mm -hmm. I encourage people to, uh, to you know, use what they have and don't get so focused on, oh, my God, I don't have that, and what do I right. do now? I can't do this. You know, it's a little different with uh, baking and pastry. They're, yeah, it's know, a science. That's a little more <laughs> exact. It's more science, <laughs> but savory cooking is, is really, you know, 
go for it. I, I once heard, you know, there are there's no no such thing as a bad recipe, only a new creation. You know? I like <laughs> that. I like that. Oh, yeah. And fact, sometimes, though, you know, could be pretty bad. But <laughs> a good, <laughs> you might as well try. You know? A good exactly. example is uh, Chris's recipe for Irish coffee calls for one jigger of scotch, and I'm pretty sure there's two or three in here. Yes. <laughs> I shouldn't have made those today. Just, just an example of how you can improvise. Okay, I'm glad so. you're still with us, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> we are too. Fall off the yeah. chair over here. <laughs> so, uh, so you blend up all this crab meat, which, by yeah. the way, we did not uh, buy a crab and then you know uh, deshell it or whatever you would call it, pull the, pull all the meat out at Costco. You can get lump crab, like uh, prepared yeah. already, ready to go. It was from Vietnam. I would prefer to use some dungeon <laughs> a better choice crab mm-hmm. or something, right? right. But but they it were was, in a pinch there, and the people listening <laughs> and, he, and Chris is all you know, about there improvising. Go. People listening right now will just by the nature of the time and when the when the game mm-hmm. starts would find themselves in a pinch. So if you want right. to put these yeah, together, probably. you can swing by Costco and get mm-hmm. it at a pretty good price. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do you get a lot of Dungeness crab down here? You know, uh, I... I'm you know, shy to say I don't know. I don't know for sure, but I feel like that's not something we have a lot of because mm-hmm. it's not sticking out for me. Okay. So I know far the farther north you go, it's yeah. going to be something you see more of during it's a that Bay season. Area it is thing yeah. north of Monterey, I think. Right? I think so. Right, right. Uh-huh, Monterey, oh, yeah. Monterey Bay uh, North, and so uh, all right. So you you take this mixture and you form it into patties, and uh, what you call for in the recipe, but people could use any sort of really breadcrumbs they want mm-hmm. uh, or even go uh, gluten-free. But you use something called panko or pan- panko. Oh, yeah. right. It's just a Japanese breadcrumb. Yeah. Um, certainly, hey, if you have bread at, at home, it's a great way to, you know, use leftover bread. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and toast a little bit, you know, make some breadcrumbs and add it in. Mm-hmm. I like to um, just kind of scant add, you know, if you will, to the mixture mm-hmm. um, and just to see where it's going to start forming you know and i don't like to work the crab too much i like to have a little you know a big chunk lump or a chunk here and there a little texture because you're going to put a little panko i do at least on the outside mm-hmm. and when you do that it'll kind of help bind it even better so it's really you know it's nice and crispy and and then it's just really crab you know and yeah squeeze a little lemon on top or serve with a lemon aioli or you can it's you know, some blood orange segments mm-hmm. right now, citruses mm-hmm. and seasoning. Oh, yeah, that that's a good, good idea. Nice little crest salad or, you know, whatever. So then, So then we um, we took a, a griddle that we used to make pancakes uh, that was mm-hmm. kind of bowed, so it made it difficult. Yeah, to, it was a little warped. <laughs> it was a little warped. But uh, threw some <laughs> olive oil on the pan, and that's what we used uh, to then fry these that up. That sounds good. And you do it till they're that nice golden. But you did not have the heat too high. Well, I you know, for one, I, it... I, I just started kind of uh, easy. I didn't quite know your kitchen or the heat or the pan was a little warped. So, right. um, and if you, know, you go suggest, too far, it's yeah. hard to go back. So, yeah. <laughs> you I was know, kind of still adjusting it. But, Good point, uh, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> Once you burn it, uh, right, right. You know, you have it, you have cranked. Actually, what will happen is those because they're really delicate, uh, light breadcrumbs. They will brown and get dark and before it even starts to kind of mm-hmm. warm through right. the crab cake. So I would suggest starting, um, you know, a nice low heat and take your time. Yeah, you be know, conservative. And, and yeah. you served it with <laughs> exactly. a you served it with a, a peanut sauce that you <laughs> threw together. This well, that's a, what was in your fridge. So right. I was like, Impro- okay, improvise. let's you know, if you want this, go ahead and. <laughs> it's a peanut dressing and, from Trader Joe's. <laughs> use this, and, it, and you mix and, the peanut dressing <laughs> wow. from Trader Joe's with what? I don't know. You had some hot sauce in there, I think, and a little lime. And uh, I don't, sounds I don't good. Some parsley I put in it. Um, yeah, that's why. Now <laughs> that's you know, he's talking about new recipe, right? Well, now you know why we made it so difficult for him to get out of the house. <laughs> because we, <laughs> we are was, not leaving. Yeah. We want more of that in the yeah. future for sure. Okay, so uh, that satisfies our Baltimore culinary dish that you right. could bring, but with a West Coast sensibility to it, and so. Yeah. Uh, which uh, that way you're sort mm-hmm. of making both teams happy. You know, you've got <laughs> if you have if you have Ravens fans I mean, I think coming in Baltimore, over. Baltimore, you got to think of crab cakes. I yes. wish I was a little more familiar. I know, Bal- uh, you know, Maryland has mm-hmm. wonderful farms and dairies, right. and they do great artisan cheese and right. You know, um, stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, but you know, Maryland crab cakes, kinda right? It's the go to. Uh huh. We have two more dishes that we are going to get to. Uh, one is the mufaletta. Sandwich oh, from uh, Yum. New Orleans, right? <laughs> uh, once again, Chris, uh, you know, does a little twist on it. And Gabe was talking, Gabe Saglia from Travel Zoo earlier was talking about how many people will be inspired to go to New Orleans because of all of the fanfare surrounding the Super Bowl. The sandwich has sold me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to go just for the sandwich. Can the you um, I can. show a shot of that, Patty? Yep. Hold on one second. I have to uh, 
I have to get it with our, it's going to be our double cam here. And, uh, okay, so you see the studio shot on the, if you're watching online right now, uh, you'll see the studio shot on the left and the, and the Mufalettas on the right. Uh, these are not for the um, we health heart. conscious. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think good. of Super Bowl as being the day to eat healthy. No, no yeah. do I. Right, this is the one-time splurge. Yeah. Exactly, and uh, Chris will <laughs> go over the recipe, which, by the way, every recipe that Chris is talking about uh, thus far, the crab cakes and the muffaletta, are available at eatdrinkexplore.com. Just click on our recipe section, very easy to find. And uh, Chris is very loose about the recipe and <laughs> encourages you to uh, you know, think for you yourself. A guideline, yeah, a little guideline there and then maybe too um, loose i don't know and then finally uh what we'll finish the whole half hour up with is a chili served in sourdough b- bread bowls you can uh-huh i uh i have to have chili at a super bowl it's just for me you know I, I love chili uh certainly chipino being from san francisco might have been a more a better dish uh-huh but and we decided to use anchor steam beer aha Ooh, into the mix. you're listening to the eat drink explore radio network we're back with more recipe tips for your super bowl party in just a moment The holidays are now over, but Restaurant Month here in California is just getting started. As January unfolds with a wave of culinary diversity, the hottest place in the state to take it all in is along the Central Coast in San Luis Obispo County. Featured on local menus are ingredients grown on nearby farms, savory seafood caught that day in the Pacific Ocean, and grass-fed beef raised on the county's lush green hillsides, all served with a touch of western flavor unique to the region. Not only are these offerings among the best in the nation, but these foods are paired with top local wines, craft brews, and outstanding scenery. When considering your 2013 New Year's resolutions, be sure to include an education for your palate, an experience that can only come from visiting the culinary destination that is San Luis Obispo County. Oh, and I'm sure saving money is on your list of resolutions as well. Perfect, because participating restaurants are offering substantial three-course menus for just $30. This is your opportunity to sample some of the many establishments you've talked about visiting but never have or revisiting some of your old favorites. And because Slow County is at the heart of Central Coast wine country, a new element is being added this year called Wine Wednesdays. Now, select restaurants will be pairing their menus with a local vintner's selections and look for other wine-related options as well. San Luis Obispo County's 6th Annual Restaurant Month runs January 1st through the 31st, but don't wait until the month is almost over to start enjoying this annual tradition. Don't hesitate. Find the restaurant of your choice and make your reservations now. For more information, head to sanluisobispocounty.com and start planning your next mouth-watering adventure. Hi, this is Rick Moranis. You know, some people are more careful about what they feed their cars than what they feed their bodies. They know that the wrong fuel can hurt a car's performance and maybe ruin the engine. But the wrong food can have the same effect on your health. Too much fat, too many calories, and too little of what's good for you can affect how well you feel and even lead to serious illness. So eat right. It'll help you keep running smooth. For more information, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Wayne Brady for the Will Rogers Institute. Hey folks, I've got something that will truly revolutionize your life. It's called exercise. It will get you from here to there, allow you to spend time with your family and meet new people, cut inches from your waistline, and improve the quality of your life. Even help improve your self-image. Sexy. So when you've got to choose between moving around or lying on the couch, choose exercise. You won't be sorry. For your free booklet, visit wrinstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. For the latest video and information from today's show, head on over to eatdrinkexplore.com. We're constantly updating it with the latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Also, we're launching a new section of the site called California you love. This is where we recommend great companies. And the best part is every single business we feature is locally owned. We've checked them out and are confident you'll love them as much as we do. This is a great tool to have as we head into the holiday shopping season. Since you're already spending money, you might as well support your neighbor. We choose businesses that give back to the community, care about the environment, or use only the freshest local and organic ingredients. They also make their products here, not overseas. Our 
our California Love business recommendation tool is still in the development stages, but will be available very soon at eatdrinkexplore.com. Eat, drink, explore media, your lifestyle information source. Crunch time, 9.49 the time. Literally crunch time. Sandwich crunch. Uh, <laughs> Mufaletta. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mufaletta. Mufaletta sandwich, uh, which is a main mainstay, I mm-hmm. guess, of the uh, Nolans uh, culinary scene. And we have a recipe for you to throw some of these up, turn it into uh, finger food or that sort of thing for your Super Bowl party. Chef Chris Douglas from the San Francisco Bay Area joins us right now uh, with his take on the mufaletta. Chris, uh, so this is really packed full of uh, traditional uh, sort of cured meats. Yeah, mortadella, salami, ham. People put pepperoni in it sometimes. uh Uh, yeah, it's a it's a hearty sandwich. Layer it's upon very, layer. Yeah, lots of layers. Uh, lots of layers. And an uh, olive salad that really I think uh, makes the sandwich. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, uh, and what that really is sort of the twist on this sandwich, right? Yeah, I th- well, yeah, I think it is. Mm-hmm. You know, um, lots of olives, carrots, cauliflower. You know, there's uh, some bright acidity, the slight pickle. Uh, there's parsley, a little oregano. Um, is it spicy? It, uh, this is not spicy. I made this one. Uh, well, there's some pepperoncini in it, so mm-hmm. yeah. Sometimes that gives a little kick. Yeah, for sure. Now, but do no, you like red peppers? Do you anything. toast the bread, Chris? You know, traditionally, no, it's not toasted. Okay. Um, you know, it was invented actually uh, Central Grocery, I believe, mm-hmm. in you know New Orleans, mm-hmm. and, and um, you know it's an Italian sandwich. Yeah. Uh, traditionally made on a like a sesame seed sort of hearty Italian round loaf. Uh huh. Um, and, and you really need to have some sturdy bread, I would imagine. Yeah, to hold you need all yeah, that. The idea is that you you make it ahead of time, and you really let that olive salad sort of uh, marry into the bread. Let the bread sort of soak it up. And, okay. Uh, so it is a sandwich that could be that's really meant to be made ahead of time, right? And you know you can like even weigh it a little bit, press it in. Um, I toasted the bread today because I had some bread that, quite frankly, I you know needed a little. Light. Wasn't sturdy. <laughs> it wasn't that. sturdy enough. Well, it was sturdy. It was, getting old. It was just uh, two. Yeah, <laughs> a day old. It <laughs> had a couple days longer than maybe right. I should have. So I just threw a little toast on it. Patty, why don't you fun, grab one of those know? and taste it? Oh, please. No. Uh, do I have to? I mean, this is yeah. talk about like a so. food tailor made for Patty Pyburn. Don't uh, mind if I do. We are looking at it uh, right now and Patty is uh, sampling mm. one of the mufaletta. Uh, Chris, what he yeah. did is he, they're big rounds and wow. he cut it into four. So, uh, you know, like you would a pizza or something. And mm-hmm. so you get your own little pie wedge of uh, mufaletta. Perfect. I think perfect size for serving at a party. And so uh, what do you think? Yum. Uh, yeah. You know they really should be delicious, super wet with olive oil and, and the you know like, again sloppy. Olives, yeah, I, very so sloppy. So when are we making reservations are, you know, for New Orleans? More of that. <laughs> when are we going? Yes, I don't know. <laughs> this yeah. is awesome. Yeah. When it becomes more affordable, we're not going today. Everyone is being fleeced out of every last penny that is in New Orleans every right now. Every single hotel room's taken. And uh, bless you for helping that city, uh, um, you know, regain its Anthony. Traction, but. Are you envious right now because I'm eating? <laughs> our, an- our Anthony, who runs the audio board on this show, unfortunately is uh, gluten intolerant. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you could eat the inside out. <laughs> right. I guess you of could. the sandwich, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. so let's um, move on from the mufaletta now to the mm-hmm. final Do we recipe. Have to? I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the final recipe that uh, Chris is sharing, and this one is made with a San Francisco staple. Well, you know, obviously, San Francisco, you think of Chipino, and, you know, while Chipino is incredible and wonderful, I just thought it would be, uh, you know, I like chili. <laughs> Super I love Bowl, mm-hmm. Super Bowl is kind of about wings and chili and, uh, you know, chips and nachos, and it's, you know, kind of a day you just, you go for it. Uh, so I decided, actually, why don't we do, it's a little easier to make, you know, the uh-huh. Chipino, or a little less, you know, it's uh, it's easier, I guess I should say. Right. Um, so I decided to use Anchor Steam beer. We'll, we'll use, <laughs> go right. figure. So we'll use, you know, we'll feature Anchor Steam and uh-huh. we'll go ahead and make uh, a chili. Right. You know, that people can. 
And and you did include uh, beans in this chili. Is the meat base uh, beef? It is. It's beef, ground beef, uh, grass fed actually, and then I put some chorizo as well in it. Uh huh. Chris told mm-hmm. me last night that uh, he doesn't think he's ever made the same chili <laughs> twice, mm-hmm. and so uh, you know, being forced into creating a recipe was a little on the difficult side for him because he's like. Well, I don't know. I use what I have in my kitchen. I, I agree. Yeah. Fresh. That's how I make chili, I mean, too. It's so easy, really. Mm-hmm. There's no wrong to it, in my opinion. But it was kind of fun to do this because now I have uh, like some reference. If I want to make this uh-huh. particular chili again... You might I be can, able to you know. recreate it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Randall, absolutely. we have a shot. I don't know if you can we see do. the chili. We do, and for those watching online, you can see Chris's uh, chili here. It looks very rich mm-hmm. and thick. Is there a tomato base to this? There is. I actually took some dried uh, ancho and pasilla chilies and took the seeds out, toasted it in your saute mm. pan. You know, it kind of just blooms, brings the flavor out, softens it a bit. Yeah. Then threw those chilies in with some garlic uh, and then some tomatoes and then made a puree. And you, so you put that in yeah. like a food processor or a yeah, blender? Yeah, blender. I used my home blender, you know, pureed it all up and then uh, threw that in with some beef stock and, and uh, the onions. And and you browned the beef as well? Yeah, uh-huh. the beef was browned. And Which gives it, caramelizes it a bit. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Well, and, you know, the, when you brown the beef, it actually kind of it tends to to steam a little bit you know and yeah. release a little of the moisture but you, you know retain everything and and then you used uh pinquito beans uh, or i'm sorry you used pinto beans uh but i should have used pinquito beans sitting we're down here in the mm. central <laughs> coast right a little something that's our bean <laughs> i know you serve know. it with tri-tip and uh, i really wasn't going to use any beans at all and go more of a texas chili mm-hmm but then I'm like, ah, well, I think everybody really wants a bean in their chili. Everyone so. could use a little, <laughs> little gas so, uh, for their day. <laughs> so, uh, well, it looks delicious, Chris. Thanks. And uh, we haven't posted this, r- the chili recipe yet online. But uh, here's the deal. Uh, you could easily find a chili recipe. But the trick for the flavoring of this was at the addition of Anchor Steam. Yeah, Anchor Steam, I used Anchor Porter. You certainly could use really any any of the Anchor Steam beers. Uh, I think Porter is, is great. It has a real kind of coffee, chocolate, you know, a- after note. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it goes great. In fact, this kind of turned out to be almost reminiscent of a, a little bit of mole, you know, after, after I was oh, finished yeah. with the, you know, deep, dark, kind of rich chilies after, you know. Yeah. And, and then the Anchor Steam, the Porter, the uh, the the beef stock it just uh had a real kind of it's almost like you know mole i guess Mm -hmm. mole chili Mm -hmm. which which i didn't intend i don't but it's great but sometimes (laughs) that's the best you know uh unintended consequences or um (laughs) what's the there's some expression surrounding that term (laughs) uh, it's the irish coffee i was gonna say right less (laughs) irish coffee you might remember (laughs) Oh, isn't that the case? Well, Chris, uh, three great options for people who are considering a uh, dish for today's Super Bowl party. We started the whole half hour off with your crab cakes uh, with a West Coast twist, then the Mufaletta sandwich, which is a tradition right there out of New Orleans, Mm -hmm. and then uh, capped it off or tapped it off, I guess you could say, with uh, (laughs) Anchor Steam-infused chili that has sort of a mole taste to it. Chris Douglas, chef from Oakland, California. Uh, We're going to try to get him to come back on a regular basis because he always has uh, great tips and our recipe section can always use a little beefing up. Thank you, Chris. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thanks for having me. Patty Pyburn, as always, thank you so much for co-hosting. Anthony Renaro at the Audio Controls. Cora Adama working the phones, including all the way to Zurich, Switzerland. Hey, go Niners, make it a great Sunday. You've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you missed any of our segments today, look for them online or through our free Apple and Android apps. Catch you back right here next week.